Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, The Real Super Sam. Today is another Batman 1966 review and I hope you enjoy. We are continuing going in chronological order for Batman 1966. Today we are looking at episodes 5 and 6 of the story that introduced us to the Joker. This episode was based off Batman issue 73, The Joker's Utility Belt. These episodes, The Joker is Wild, Batman is Riled, are the third story in the series. At the beginning, we see Chief O'Hara and a prison guard talk about the Joker's reform. O'Hara says baseball, even though they're playing softball. Though, watching this, I'm on the edge of my seat, expecting something bad to happen. While Warden Crichton doesn't appear, we do see this as more of his prison reform attempts, where entertainment is part of containment. Joker having fun in prison reminds me of Joker always saying that Arkham Asylum is a place where he rests and takes a break from, from fighting Batman. But then, a spring from under the pitcher's mitt launches Joker into the air over the wall into a net which is off screen. The devil, he sprung himself. The narrator then intervenes. Sprung? You can say that again. Hearing this, the GCPD decide to call Batman, who is sitting at home watching Robin get piano lessons from Aunt Harriet during... Dick says he wants to give up playing music, and Bruce says all music is important, that music is a universal language, one of the best hopes for the realization for the Brotherhood of Man. At the GCPD, looking at how Joker escaped, they come to the realization that the Joker is planning to rob the Comedian's Hall of Fame exhibit, because there is a bunch of jewels by there, and they were not going to include a Joker in that hall. They head there and they see a Joker statue. Batman swears he saw it move. Nothing weird happened, so the museum closes early and Batman leaves. That's when the Joker emerges from inside the bus statue and also do his henchmen. Batman and Robin figure out the Joker's plan and head back in to stop him. Then a fight ensues. They manage to defeat Batman though and drag him out unconsciously. But Batman was playing possum and from his utility belt uses a smoke bomb and escapes. Next, this leads to Joker creating his own utility belt, having evil clown versions of the gadgets to escape. Now, Joker is causing chaos and pulling off the biggest crime spree Gotham City has ever seen with his new belt, giving Batman and Robin a good run for his money. Researching, I learned of all the kids were stunned to see the Joker for the first time that night, since the TV guy never screwed up with the totally wrong entry of what the episode that night premiered. It said it was episode 9. But it was this episode, episode 5. Having Joker be one of Batman's greatest enemies, they must have been very happy to see the Joker for the first time on the show, since they weren't expecting it. The trio of best male villains on the show concludes here, Riddler, Penguin, and Joker, played by Cesar Romero. Romero's Joker is incredibly vocal, he has no calm moments, and has a distinctive laugh. I don't have a problem with his mustache, it becomes a funny quirk of the show now, but here, I don't like how noticeable it is. Joker should be funny. Do I think he's funny? Yes, definitely the funniest rogue we've seen on the series so far. There's a funny line where he says, Champagne for everyone! After a henchman thinks Joker's plan is to get Batman drunk. He also says crazy things like when he calls Batman and Robin, Fat Man and Boy Blunder. There's a scene where Joker takes over in a TV news broadcast and tells Batman a clue to catch him. He uses a made-up game show called What's My Crime. I think that's a really funny scene too. I really enjoy watching this Joker move around and talk. Sure, he may not tell actual jokes, but man, I think it's entertaining to watch here, just like the other rogues on the show. This is one of the funniest Batman 1966 episodes of Season 1. The show always pokes fun at a society, and here... They do it to guy stereotypes drinking at a bar. When Joker is revealed, the fool gets scared and says to his wife, It's my mother-in-law. I seriously died laughing every time I watch it. There's a scene where Batman says, Joker has hit them below the belt. Oh my gosh. I love that Joker has his own gadgets here. It makes him more interesting and more of a threat. Joker throughout the story is unpredictable. That makes him scary, as scary as he got on the show. The look for Joker is a bit bad here. Why is he wearing pink, not purple? I didn't really notice his hair changing color, but I could notice it if I looked hard enough. Joker has a blonde hench girl, obviously not Harley Quinn, maybe an inspiration for her, but this girl was based off what a hench girl Joker had in the comics. The girl figured out who Batman was, that he was Bruce Wayne, 
but then she died before she could tell anyone. Joker here leaves clues to the crime she's going to commit, which I don't like here, that's more of what Riddler would do. The story is unique, since Batman and Robin face actual failure and have to face it, Batman doesn't seem affected, but Robin does. There's a part where a TV reporter talks about his kid, and his kid prays for Batman and Robin to stop Joker. One bad thing about this is Batman shows close to no emotion during those moments talking about the 8 year old kid, Harold. The newscaster was Jerry Dumphy, who at the time was the most popular local newscaster in Los Angeles, a position he held for decades. He didn't have white hair at the time of this episode. Batman in this episode has started calling Robin chum instead of old man, which is what he's known for in the series. We see the two sides of the public when it comes to Batman and Robin. One is the good side, where the cops let Batman do what he wants and how girls love Robin. Then, near the end, there's a guy in the crowd yelling at them about not stopping the Joker yet. Alfred here, we see he may be the smartest out of the two, where he figures out one of the Joker's plots. There's a scene where Joker takes over a TV broadcast and uses his hand buzzer. This reminds me of the Batman 1989 movie, where he does the same thing and he sees his hands buzzer in the gang meetup scene. There's the mask from the beginning th that the Joker uses in The Dark Knight is like the same one Joker wears when he was singing opera in the fifth episode. The fight scenes are really good here, especially the final fight. There's four fights in this story and I really enjoyed them, better than having one fight for the entire two-parter. Shots like these, the hero and villain face to face in an epic battle, are things I love in a superhero story. They have some shots like this throughout the story. I gave it a 7 out of 10. I wish it was a perfect 3 stories for the show to start off with, but this one dropped the ball a bit. It should have done way better with the Joker. Thankfully, he gets better as the show goes on. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye guys, and have a good day.